Hey everybody, happy holidays and welcome to another Lico problem. Now today's problem is called Robot Return to Origin. I believe it's uh, problem number 657. So without further ado, let's dive into this problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this prompt. There is a robot starring at position 00, the origin on a 2D plane Given a sequence of its moves, judge if this robot ends up at 0, 0 after it completes its moves. The move sequence is represented by a string and a character moves i, which is like the index of the moves array that we get, represents its ith move. Valid moves are R for right, L for left, up for uh, U for up, and D for down. If the robot returns to the origin after it finishes all of its moves, return true, otherwise return false. Um, one note here is that the way that the robot is facing is irrelevant. R will make always make the robot move right and L will always make the move go left. So here's an example input. Uh, input UT up and down equals true. The ro robot moves up once and then down once and then it's basically end up the same. And here they go left left um, so the robot is false. So taking a step back from this problem, like really think about what this problem is asking. Um, how, how would you solve this intuitively? Now, this is a really easy problem and it's one of the easiest problems that I ran into in LeetCode. But I, I chose this problem today because I wanted to start getting people to think about how to solve things intuitively. You know, a lot of times people think that programs require a lot of math and like all these kind of complex things, but it's Algorithms in a nutshell are just a set of instructions that you can follow and a lot of times uh, You could get to algorithms intuitively now if you were to solve this particular problem of a robot that traverses some kind of 2d array for example or some kind of path How would you know if it came back to where it started, right? so One intuitive way to think is hey, why don't I just try to follow these directions that I got from the moves array and see if I end up back in the same place. So you could, you know, maybe create a 2D array and then iterate for every um, every move. You could go one right, one left, and then see if the indexes that you are in is the same. Um, this approach, I think, is like intuitively it makes sense, right? You have this physical space that you could. Uh, draw out and you could just iterate over it. Obviously, it's not the best idea But what if you just take that like kind of concept of going left and right and up and down but remove the actual need for the matrix essentially so with that kind of like concept, let's take a step back to like geometry, right? Like the simplest thing that everyone kind of learns is X, Y coordinates, you know, plotting a point in a map essentially, right? So imagine you started from zero, zero, that's your, so your X axis is how far you go left or right and Y axis is how far you go up and down. So with that concept, you could say, hey, if I'm going left, I'm just going left of my, I'm just going left one, right? On that X axis and then on the right, I'm going just plus one and up and down will be y. So this whole concept uh, you could just use to solve this problem. And one last intuitive thing that you need to like kind of get to solve this problem is if I, no matter what uh, set of instructions that I take, if I want to get back to where I started, I have to, if I took n amount of right steps, I have to take the same amount of n steps to the left and same with up and down. So there's this kind of like relationship between left and right and up and down where if I have the equal number of going right to the equal number of going left, then at least my X will be in the origin. And if I have the same number of equal rights, uh, equal number of going up and equal number of going down, then they kind of cancel out and I go back to the origin. So that's one way to solve this problem. So let's take a look at this example. So let L equal zero, let R equal zero, let up equals zero, let down, oops, down equals zero. So we just kind of set our initial variables. Now I'm going to loop over the moves. So while let I, I zero, I is less than moves up length, I plus plus, we're going to grab out we're going to grab that the current move. So let's just say move equals moves i. 
And then uh, let's just write a switch name in here. So switch, and we're gonna switch on the move. And here we're gonna say case um, L. We're gonna do something and then we'll break. And then here we'll say case R, we're gonna do something and we'll break. And then case up, we're going to do something here and we'll also break here. And finally case down, we'll also do something. Um, and then we'll break. Okay, so we have this. So what should we be doing when we go left? So we have these like variables. So essentially we're going left by one, right? So let's just increment that left. And then here, let's increment that right. And then and up, same thing, we increment. So we're just incrementing, saying that we've actually, we actually hit one of these cases. And at the end, we just have to compare these with that kind of um, opposite opposing left and right being the same and up and down being the same. If that's true, then it's true. If not, then we return false, right? So we could return and we could use a ternary here where we say L equal equal R and up equal equal down. Then we return true, else return false. So let's go ahead and try this. Let's, oops, this automatically returns. So let's go ahead and try it again. And it looks like it's working, it's successful. Now let's take a step back and um, also realize that we could solve this another way, a different approach. Instead of counting how many times we went left and counting how many times we went right, we could also just, you know, we could also just actually move in our x-axis and our y-axis. And if at the end, it's the value is zero, then we could also return true. So that's another way to solve this problem. Very similar, it's just slightly different way of thinking about it. But I, the reason why I'm telling you this is uh, there's many ways to think about problems. And I'm just simply saying the fact that when you're programming, sometimes like intuitive things can just come at you. So you should follow those gut instincts first when you're trying to solve these problems and then later like figure out better ways and more efficient ways to solve it. All right, so we're back at this problem and let's go ahead and remove all of these guys. And let's just say let x equal zero and let y equal zero. So here, instead of just having these counters for how many times we went left and right, why don't we just say, hey, if we're going left, let's just decrement x by one. And if we're going right, let's just add by one. And here, we're gonna go up by one. And then down here, we're gonna go y minus minus by saying we're going down. So at the end, instead of comparing whether, uh, comparing these two against each other, we have to change this where we say if x equal zero and if y equal equal zero. Very similar code, we're just changing kind of how we're thinking about the problem and how we're solving the problem, but it should result in the same solution. And let's go ahead and submit it. It's successful. Now, one thing I want to point out before we end this problem is just kind of looking at this code. Like, which code do you prefer? Like, is this cleaner? Is the other one more clean? Because in the end, um, it'll help you solve more problems, right? It just when you look at these like leak code problems and these like you know, solutions to them, oftentimes, you know, people will write these kind of like one liners and they may look elegant and they may look kind of fancy but i would say oftentimes they're not the best solution you know oftentimes they're they sacrifice uh they sacrifice readability and also like runtime to have something that just looks a little elegant i guess but you know i personally don't like one-liners i like declare code i like to like just look at it and understand without having to think too much if there's a lot going on where there's a lot of like mathematical equations or it feels like that, then then oftentimes then like I, I can't really understand the code. So it needs to be commented. And there's a whole like slew of issues of commenting and you know making sure to update comments and all these kind of things. But I, <laughs> all I'm trying to say is keep your code simple and intuitive. Um, as much as you can. And even these kind of small problems that are super easy, 
uh, you know, if you've never done it before, it might be hard for you. But for most engineers, it, like this, this is like a no-brainer. Is um, but yeah, it, there's multiple ways to solve this problem, and um, one way might be more intuitive than others. Uh, so, but the big point is to try to get as many. Just try to look at problems not in the black and white, but just understand that problems have multiple angles uh, to solve it. For example, I briefly mentioned you could solve this problem by making a 2D matrix, right? And then setting yourself at zero zero, and then having each of these actually move you in that matrix, and then uh, see if you end up in the same matrix, for example. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.